This is me. I am a troll, I am a warlock, and my name is Meow Meow Cutie. I get to run around, blow things up, and hang out with my friends. Sounds pretty cool, right? As much as maybe I wish this were my real life, this is clearly just an avatar. A visual expression of myself in a virtual world. As far as gamers go, I'm relatively new to the scene, and I've only been hiding behind this facade of Meow Meow for the last eight months or so. In the last eight months of my life, I've spent approximately 55 days and 13 hours being Meow Meow Cutie, as well as a number of other characters. That's over 22% of my life in this time period as a virtual character. Although I'm no more addicted to World of Warcraft than I am to vodka, chocolate or sex, I've spent more time in the last eight months killing these virtual creations than I have drinking alcohol, eating candy or making love. Combined. World of Warcraft is a persistent, immersive online world in which people create and enact characters who pursue adventures, success in war and other social and non-social goals. I can run around and blow things up as much as I want. I can fight giant mythical beasts, fly on dragons, some of who are actually my friends, explore foreign lands, or simply choose to hang around and talk with whoever is there at the time. I guess the key idea I want to explore in this video is how people communicate and express themselves when they're constructing an online identity. I mean, something that I invest so much of my time of day into must reflect who I am as a person, doesn't it? Maybe instead, it's simply a conscious selection of the elements of me which I choose to share. Or maybe it's all a complete fabrication. Although my blog does focus on World of Warcraft, it is important to note that many of these elements can be linked to any use of social media or online use. On Facebook, for example, we often filter the things we post and share and choose who we want to see things. We want to alter the way people perceive us, often so that it is in the best light. We are constructing an identity which is not always completely true to who we actually are. According to massive multiplayer online data, in 2012, there were an estimated 20 million users playing online role-playing games, with World of Warcraft being the most popular, having as many people play as Sweden or Bolivia has inhabitants. Massive multiplayer online role-playing games offer socially interactive environments which can provide opportunities to make strong friendships and emotional relationships with a high percentage of gamers making lifelong friends and even partners. I have made friends from all over Australia and New Zealand and including far-reaching places such as America and among others. Friendships grow as you engage in more and more activities within the game or simply through chat. Quite often, players consider the social connections within the game to be as real, strong and supportive as any real-life friendship. And why not? These players are humans too, right? But how do you know the person you're talking to is who they say they are, simply through written word? I know for one, when I'm talking for example, I like to use a good array of emoticons. I know for a fact, we all do, that a lot of the time when we say LOL, we are not actually laughing out loud. In game, I may be like, ha ha ha, big smiley face, but in person, I'm actually staring at the screen quite blankly. Does that mean I don't feel these emotions? Am I lying? If I don't actually laugh, does that mean I didn't really think you were funny? Or am I simply filling a conversation space with a cultural norm? Looking at a player's avatar, you may assume you know who they are. World of Warcraft allows you to create an avatar from a selection of choices, whether it be male, female, orc, troll, elf, panda, tauren, undead, goblin, among others. A lot of the research I read focused solely on the appearance of a player's avatar, saying that the character they choose reflects a lot about who they are as a person. Maybe this is partly true. Guys will like to play big, muscly, macho kind of build while stereotypically a lot of girls will choose the pretty little elf character. 
However, more often than not, a player's personality and their avatar are really quite random. There is a lot about a person which can't be known simply by looking at their character. I have spoken to players who are paraplegic from the nipple line down, and playing online games is one of the few things that they can manage to do. I have other friends, like my buddy Astilia here, who chooses to play a pretty little elf character. But, in real life, Astilia is actually a young Asian male who simply likes to play a female tune. The thought of dressing up as the opposite sex in real life and parading around may seem quite daunting to many, but online, this isn't such a rare phenomenon. So I guess this was the most frustrating part of my research, because clearly, the graphic surface is not the only important layer of game experience and game reality. It is not even the main layer of communication for the organised gamer community. So this leads me to my next idea about the growing transparency within and outside of the game itself. Although within World of Warcraft there are many chat options, including trade chat, guild chat, whispers among friends, and chat within a raid or dungeon to coordinate these groups of people. These forms of communication make it quite easy to disguise and take on the mask of our characters. It is all extremely anonymous. However, technology has expanded and catered to the ever-pressing need for instant communication, especially if you are trying to coordinate in fast decision-making circumstances. This is where the introduction of voice technology comes in. Although many people are aware of Skype, there are specific programs for gaming, such as Vent, Mumble, TeamSpeak, and a few others, which cater to holding a large number of people in a channel for instant communication. The thing I found most interesting about using these programs is how people are different in how they type to how they speak, when they speak, and what they choose to say. It's as if, in having this instant audio connection, people lose a type of filter. For one, their gender, general age, social background, and maybe a few other things can be heard straight away. Secondly, they don't have time to think about the things they want to say, and often a more truthful response is given, which leads to the third point, that you can hear their emotions. Often in text, you have no idea if someone is being sarcastic, if they are mocking you, or if they are upset. This all disappears when you add the layer of audio communication. It's quite impressive to think about the number of ways a gamer can be simultaneously located on multiple layers of communication, from the basic layer of steering and controlling a character while writing to group members or friends who play on a different location or who may not even be logged into the game. Additionally, the player can chat with other gamers on the game surface or communicate through posts in forums or on guild websites and even groups on Facebook. Combined with audio communication, this makes up to four layers of simultaneous communication. Is this the real life? Is this just fantasy? Caught in a life to me, adding reality in the way of adding voice chat to a virtual world takes away that which is different between virtual worlds and the real world. The gap between offline and online reality becomes narrower because the different communication modes begin to blur. As a result, perhaps players are not only constructing their identities on the other side of the looking glass, but simultaneously constructing their identity in the real world.